Hello and welcome to the Fog Motor Pool. Here we have our latest video in which we're looking at the restoration of a Panhard AML90 here in the UK. This is part one of a number, we don't know how many exactly at the moment, uh, but let's kick off with the beginning of the story. We've done some work on restoring an Argentine AML90 and you can search around our channel for a video on that. We also were running a Panhard AML90 inside the Farg motor pool and it was whilst we were trying to buy an AMX13 on the continent that we were shown in the corner of a dusty warehouse a number of what seemed initially Panhard AMLs. Uh, upon closer inspection we noticed they were actually uh, Elans which is a South African version of the Panhard and we're very I excited to um, have these uh, offered to us and we decided that it would make great sense to try and purchase them and bring them back to the UK. Uh, some were uh, more or less complete but inside many parts were actually missing um, even though some of the wiring looms and dashboards were still there there were still some vital parts and most of them nearly all of them were missing their engines at the very end of the queue there was one panhard that still had its engine in it and i was told that it also came with the aml 90 turret and we purchased all of them in one batch and brought them back to the uk so you can actually see us there picking up our panhards and getting them back the star prize was obviously the panhard aml and you can see it here coming back at night on the back after a uh, the back of our lorry after a, a long drive we're very excited and uh, to start the restoration of this where did the vehicle come from okay it had started out as a panhard it had been upgraded uh, to try and sell to a spanish speaking nation which probably the argentines there had been extensive testing of it, were redesigning the rear of the hull for being able to fit in what was a commercially available diesel engine made by Peugeot. This needed uh, a cooling system as it was a water-cooled diesel engine and also a cooling fan to draw that air through and keep the temperature down. That was quite a positive for us because the actual engine, as we said, came from a Peugeot car from the 1990s, so the chances of us getting parts for it were a lot higher than one of those original petrol engines. It had quite a, I would describe, Buck Rogers interior, which had um, uh, digital uh, dashboards and quite an interesting wiring loom but unfortunately the whole vehicle was not a commercial success which was probably a benefit for us as we were able to purchase it. The Elans we brought back to the UK don't fit in with our French um, collection so therefore we let those go and so we focused in on that Panhard AML90 um, and started an assessment to see what parts were actually needed. To be fair it was in pretty fair condition and we uh, expected, I don't know naively, to be able to delve into that engine. Here we can see it at the back of the vehicle and get the thing running um, without minimal work. As it turned out the engine really had been um, ran um, probably to destruction um, by its previous owners. You can see that they'd cut a lot of the cooling pipes and also had removed uh, some of the timing uh, uh, elements. Yes, it was uh, the 1990s Peugeot 605 engine, so we were confident perhaps we could we could uh, uh, get parts for it and get it fixed. And we also noticed that the barrel was quite short, and that simply was because it had relaxed the whole gun back into the turret, and we were able uh, to remedy that quite quickly. The driving position was pretty sparse, but we had parts on the shelves. And there we can see us trying to pull with a forklift that barrel back into its original position. It made sense after it was secured to lift that turret off uh, and get it out of the way so we could work on the chassis a little bit easier without that turret basket being in the way. So it was uh, removed, you can see there, working late at night again, onto a frame we made out of scaffolding uh, so we could put it to one side and focus on uh, uh, the hull. The front that had a couple of dents in it, which proved quite hard to um, remove those, take those dents out. So uh, an executive decision was to take those wings off and we would put on um, a, a fairly fresh pair that we had on the shelves. And you can see the uh, the vehicle started coming together. So we're quite positive about it. And it was about time for us to uh, get it into paint. 
so therefore it always helps the morale when the vehicle isn't in sort of four different colors uh, and we got it into the paint shop and it went back into what I would describe as a French green so that's all looking really good so the next thing was to look at that engine and see if we could get the thing running we uh, checked the cooling pack uh, radiators etc and they all seem to be um, watertight which is great and we spent very many long hours trying to get this thing to run but the timing was completely out um, even when we thought we'd got it right so we ran the engine and disaster struck it basically chewed itself up uh, so the engine had to come out quite disappointing but again we were positive that we'd be able to get parts for it because it was a commercially available uh, engine that allowed us to get into uh, the engine bay and clean that up and the engine went off to have it fully rebuilt meanwhile we had a look at the cooling system now you can see the fan there in the back and that was drawing the air in but that fan was actually missing we tried to source an original and we just couldn't find one so on a tip off we found out about a fighting vehicle 432 uh, tank uh, it still had its pack in it and on the top were two cooling fans so hey presto those were liberated uh, from the tank in the scrapyard and they fitted really nicely into the back of the panhard hull and it also meant we were going to be able to get parts for these in the future as that particular fan uh, had parts available for it on the market in the UK uh, engine came back really excited in it went um, we topped up the coolant uh, we decided this time we wouldn't run it um, uh, outside let's get it in uh, sort of under control so it's in the workshop and there we go bang 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 we got the engine running and it destroyed itself again um, this was due we don't actually know uh, why but it could have been another um, uh, unresolved timing issue meanwhile uh, that engine had to come out and go away again uh, the engine went to the back of the queue um, and we focused on uh, other projects we had running at the time now interesting we did a little bit of work on and off for the next few months while the engine was being worked on so there we can see the uh, disc brakes we put a wiring loom back in and a dashboard also I wasn't happy with the wheels and tires they seem to have come off of an Alain so we were able to use uh, some Panhard Michelin tires that were on our, our shelves and we put those back on um, and looked at the wiring while we were waiting and there yes the tire on the right hand side is on back to front but anyway it was getting it was coming together and really pleased with it we're checking the uh, fuel tank uh, cleaning it out of sediment but that engine really hasn't yet come back and it has been uh, two years now we've been waiting so we decided that since this channel was quite new we would uh, restore this as part of a vlog on the uh, Farg Motorpool channel so you can see we're getting the vehicle out here and those observant amongst you will notice it has the AML 60 turret which was temporarily placed on there more for storage than anything else so what we're going to do is over the next couple of months we'll be um, getting that engine back in getting the vehicle running and starting our uh, restoration of both the hull and uh, the turret so join us for that um thanks very much for watching and tata for now